morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. I want to encourage you, my sisters, those of you who are in the faith of Jesus Christ, given the, the current times that we're living in, the things that are happening in the world, there are many of you who listen to this channel who are young in the faith, and I wanted to help to equip you for what is um, a, a very interesting time and, and a, very, a very troubling time, especially to those who are young in the faith. So we want to understand from the scripture how it is we can endure until the end. Let's begin today in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12, and verse 29. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. And seek not what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Well, the first thing I want to point out here is that those who inherit the kingdom of God are a little flock. It's not a great stampede of, of people who are all of a sudden going to get uh, vacuumed up into heaven because they believe that Jesus Christ existed. They believe that he was resurrected from the dead. You see, the scripture says that even the devils believe. It is not enough to only believe. In order to enter the kingdom of God, one must be born of water and spirit. That's written in John chapter 3 and verse 5, and it's the words of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. In order to enter the kingdom of God, we must be born of water and spirit. And if we do that, if we're baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, then we are able to walk in holiness. You see, the unrighteous don't inherit the kingdom. Only the righteous do. And God, in his everlasting mercy, made a way for people to walk in holiness and righteousness by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So the Spirit of the living God that is in a Christian who is born of water and spirit, enables them to have power to be able to speak the truth unto people even when they're reviled, when they're persecuted, even when they're put to death. So a Christian who is born of water and spirit now is able to stand in strength and in holiness no matter what people say, no matter what people do. Because not only do we fear the Lord, but we love him, and he loves us. And this is what he says to us. Fear not, little flock. Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. There are many people who believe themselves to be Christians, who have been deceived by religious authorities, and some of them might still possibly, there's a few moments left, to turn away from those lies and find out what God says about himself in his holy word, which is the King James Bible, if you speak English. However, most religious people are in bondage to their religion. It was made to be addictive. So the false religion is very addictive and very binding. It, it, it's the prison house, actually. The reason it, it was made that way is to keep people thinking things like, well, so many people that I love and have loved couldn't possibly be wrong. People are in bondage to the false religion sometimes because that's where their family members are. That's where their friends are. That's their social network. And they're not willing to 
do what Jesus Christ commanded, which is to leave all and follow him. Jesus Christ said, if you're not willing to leave your family and your friends and your house and your property and your money and your career and everything behind, if you're not willing to do that, then you're not worthy of his kingdom, you see. So the enemy has made it so that most people will stay in their false religion and they are thinking themselves to be saved when they're not. And it's really very simple. It's very simple and very easy to be saved, but most people don't want to hear it. And the reason they don't want to hear it is because they're in bondage to the false religion. They can't depart from the things of this world that they love, the things that they have always done, the things that are familiar, the people around them, the people they care about. And they realize, and I've actually had people say this to me boldly, like they, they don't, they, they know, some of them know it. They say, well, I'd have to tell all my family members that they're going to hell, that they're not in the faith, that they're not saved. And that would mean grandma and, and Uncle Bill and my best friend there who died in a car accident aren't in the kingdom of heaven, and I just can't accept that. And so they reject the gospel. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is very simple. The way that we enter into covenant with Jesus Christ is to be baptized in his name and filled with the Spirit. And then we walk in holiness. That is the way of salvation. Now, if we turn to uh, 1 John chapter 5, and, and I want to read verses 5 through 8 here. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, in earth, pardon me, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. What this passage is talking about is what bears witness in heaven that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Verse 5 says that these things bear witness the Spirit beareth witness that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, not God the Son. In verse 7, we read about the three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And we know that these are three ways in which we, we see the everlasting and eternal God who created all things for himself, the one God, these three ways in which we see him. It, we see him manifest. The Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word, so God is the Word. And the Holy Ghost, so God is the Holy Ghost. All of these things in heaven are one. One God. Then we read in verse 8, there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. In John 3, 5, Jesus Christ said, Unless a man be born of water and spirit. Let's read it. I just want to go there and read this for you so it's very clear that I'm reading from the scripture. And this is the truth. And I know that a lot of people are upset by the truth. But frankly, they need to get over that. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 5 says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. This is the only way to be saved. And so when we're reading in 1 John 5, 8, that there are three that bear witness that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in the earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. 
There are many people running around claiming to be Christians who say that they have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to their life, but they have not obeyed his gospel. They have not been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins. They have not received the Holy Spirit of the living God to dwell inside of them, and therefore they cannot enter the kingdom of God until they do that. Until they turn away, they repent of their sins and seek Jesus Christ and obey his gospel, they are not yet in blood covenant with God, because to have the blood, one must have the spirit and the water. That is how the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to our lives. Now, I needed to say that because it's a very little flock that is in the earth right now that is the bride of Christ. There is a spirit in the world that has deceived people and convinced most people that they're all set and they're headed to the kingdom even though they have never obeyed the gospel and therefore they are yet in their iniquity. So there are various ways this iniquity manifests and this really is not a message unto sinners. This is a message unto the saints. But we know from 1 Corinthians 6, so very briefly I want to go there, and read this to you. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and let's begin here in verse 9. We know that the unrighteous do not inherit the kingdom. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then there's a list of some matters of unrighteousness that we can see in most of the false religion. So, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, pardon me, nor, pardon me, let me start over. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye were washed, ye are washed, ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So how is it that a person is justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God? By repenting and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. And thereafter, we're able to walk in holiness. That is how we are the righteous. That is how we become saints. And it's not an, a feeling in your heart that you get when you go down to that, that religious altar there and you say a sinner's prayer. and You have tears streaming down your face. And I'm not at all saying that your emotions weren't real. But that's not the way of salvation. And if you think that that is, then you're headed on the broad path that leads to destruction. And there are very few that can hear this word. Now, we know from the scripture that then we, we've made that point. Now we want to understand how it is that the righteous endure until the end. Let's go to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. You see, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There is no God the Son. There is one God, and he begat a son in the womb of a virgin. And that son, the only begotten son of the living God, is Jesus Christ. And he bore his father's name, and he spoke his father's word, because his father's spirit was in him fully. And when he spoke, he spoke his father's word. So the deity of Jesus Christ is that God was in Christ. And this is written in the scripture. I'll put the script, that passage in the description box below. So those of us who know that and have obeyed his gospel, then we are the righteous. We are saints. We are no longer wallowing in our sins. We are no longer doing the things that the world does. We have given up our own ideas about ourselves and our lives. We serve Jesus Christ, and he has made us part of his family. And sometimes 
that means we have to turn away from family members who don't want to hear the truth. And it doesn't mean we're mean to them. It means that if they don't want to hear the truth, that we keep going and we realize they have a choice about who they serve. And we can't save those around us if they don't want to be saved, if they want to cling to their religion. So in verse 17, we read, well, let's, uh, let's start in verse 15 here. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remem remembrance of them from the earth, them that do evil. You see, salvation is not a feeling. Salvation is to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, have his blood applied to your sins so that God doesn't see them anymore, so that you are no longer a sinner. You've been washed of your former sins in your old ways, crucified with Christ. And then thereafter, you're able to walk in holiness. You see, this is how we become righteous, by faith. By having faith in what Jesus Christ commanded, that we all repent and be baptized in, the name, in his name. In his name, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That name is Jesus Christ. Verse 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. So the way that we are saved is to obey the gospel and then walk in holiness. And as we are walking in holiness, there are many people who will accuse us. They'll say, oh, you think you're better than everybody else. Everybody's wrong sometimes. And what they're really saying is they don't want to believe the word of God for whatever reason. Let's go now to Psalm 16. Psalm 16. And let's begin in verse 7. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. So Christians who are in Christ... The way that we're in Christ is to be born of water and spirit, covered by his blood, and then continuing in his word, doing what he says, dwelling in his presence, abiding in his word. We set the Lord always before us. And as we do that, we are hidden in him. Let's go to Psalm 91. A lot of people don't understand that in order to be hidden under the shadow and protection of the Most High God, what is necessary is to obey him. So I want to read here, starting in verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Here we see that we, we who have made the most high God our habitation by obeying his son and being covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and thereafter continually seeking him in every single thing, setting him always before us by making the Most High our habitation where we live. So we live in the word of God. We don't depart from it. We don't spend a little time with the Lord and then go about, you know, playing video games or, or doing the things of this world. We spend all of our time in the presence of the Most High God he is our habitation, then there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh, come nigh means come near, come near thy dwelling. 
let's read now in uh, verse 14. Because he hath set his love upon me. So this is what it is to love God. To love God means that you obey him. You do what he commands. And you abide in him. Just like a wife loves her husband. When a wife loves her husband, she wants to please him all the time. She abides in her faithfulness and, and, and trust in her husband no matter what. There's not a part or of her life that is separate from that. See? Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. You see, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. Those who know that name and know what it means. So the meaning of the name of Jesus Christ is that God was in the Son and he is our Savior. And he, he has sent us his Son to redeem us from sins, not to redeem us in our sins, not to, to make it so he would look away from us continuing in sin, because sin is harmful. It's poisonous. It's horrible. It hurts you. It leads to death. So God, in his mercy, sent his only begotten son into the world to redeem people from their sins. So they didn't have to be a slave to sin anymore. So those who have obeyed his gospel are the righteous. Now I want to turn to Revelation 22. These are times that we're living in right now where the gospel has been preached unto those who are in the rebellious false religion. Those who, who believe in a trinity, who continue in their iniquity, think that all they have to do is believe and say a sinner's prayer and that thereafter they can do you know just about whatever they want and they pretend to be righteous and they pretend to be religious but when you look at them you can see that they are willfully disobedient to the word of god and what they really care about is their vain religion and their wealth and power and friends and family and fame in this world they have no regard whatsoever for the living God, and they refuse to humble themselves before the living God. So in Revelation 22, let's read verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which be filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. We all get to choose whom it is we serve. And we understand that the way is narrow, and God's people are a little flock. As we abide under the shadow of the Most High God, by abiding in his word, continuing in prayer, loving one another, speaking the truth, then when we're walking as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, being obedient unto him in each and everything, then we can trust that is, it is our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. May the word of the Lord go forth today and bless many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.